Yes, this is the same stuff as before. I haven't been on the table for a while. Okay, I'm. Let's go with. Well, I'll type in engaged. I in. Oh, I better. I can more or less type upside down, but sideways, diagonal, maybe not. I've already spelled. You know what? If it's spelled wrong, it's spelled wrong. I'm blank. Ugh, forget it. All right, now top live chat. Welcome everybody. This is the frugal eclectic, otherwise known as noodle. And no, I don't. I need to put this paint elsewhere. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah. okay, and I'm going to do 45 minute on the timer, 45 on the clock. I'm going to do smaller increments of watching my body today. And... Okay. All right. Ow. Come on. Mm -mm, nope, it's not wanting to. I'll have to strong arm it. All right. Now, at roughly six after, I will have to take this. And I have to have a little bit of food so I have string cheese. Hello, Brits. Okay, this is still. Now I'm wondering. The one thing I will show you. And. This I've had for years. I paid three dollars for it at the Goodwill. I don't know. I think I've had this thing for 15, 20 years. I've never put anything in it. It's a Harry and David trademark on the bottom. <laughs> I'm assuming that's some kind of a like a snack service. And anyway, I just, the other day, <laughs> I go, because see, I have it stacked. I like stacking certain combinations of things. And this was on the bottom. And where I had it sitting, as you can see, this portion, you know, like this portion of it. So in my eye, I would see it basically every day. You know, I could, I could look up and, oh. Because this inspires me, you know. I love that. So I got it down and I realized, oh my word, it has it has quite a not a not a huge amount of dust on it, <laughs> but a little bit of dust. So I thought, you know what? It, you know, and then I'm like, oh, there's nothing in there. Oh, I can, ooh, I can, I might even want to paint it up. Or paper it. I might want to put some of my. Well, William Morris would go better. Oopsie. William Morris would go better in here. Or maybe I could mix. I could put Debbie in here. Maybe a mix of Debbie and William Morris. But anyway, so that's one. Now, this one. Hold on. I draw. Yeah. I dropped this. 
I still haven't put my Gila stuff up from looking at it. But now the, this is what got me thinking, looking at this, this could actually become the neutral to what the, that little handkerchief kit that I bought. So before I put that up, let's, where's the box? This box, it was, I believe originally I went to a white elephant. I've been to a lot of white elephant. Hi, Zandra. I went to a, I have gone to a throughout the years. Well, anyway, this is a Mikasa bone china. And um, inside was a Christmas bell. Now the Christmas bell, I think got wrapped when, and when I, one time I moved and it, it's, and cause I don't want it sitting out cause some of my, some of my surface space is not conducive to a lot of that, but it's been sitting empty because, you know, I like Christmas and I've just always liked it. Well, all the other day I got to think and I thought, you know what? I could actually store, this is the, let me, this is the hanky one of the purchases that I did from Shauna, not this last time, but the time before. And let me put this off here. And it even has a Santa earring. Now I'm not into Santas, but this one is vintage. It's an old style. So this, I wouldn't mind when they're when they're old fashioned i don't mind them so much but some of the some of the newy stuff now this um apparently was still wet so i had to throw one of cuz one of the things got moldy now the mold is gone the molds now that it's completely dry but one of them one of the little sprigs was moldy but a little quirky whatever Okay, no, these. So it's been, I think that's why I decided just to let it sit. Oh, this is one of those, um, one of those um, paper clay things. So this is harder. This is, it reminds me of dogwood. All right. Now this, I will show you this. This is the handkerchief kit that I got from, um, and she had it all cutesy wrapped up and everything and it, it tied with this and she had this little button on it and the tag and everything but inside so then I got yeah you know okay so this let's see what time it okay I need to one moment let me say hello I think it's just Sandra and Judy which is perfectly okay. And I'll show you what I got. Well, if, if you follow Shauna, you'll see kind of one of her streams, you'll see what about a month ago, not this last sale that was last Friday and this Monday, but the one before she was selling these handkerchief kits and this is what she got this is what she put in there and then some of this the older fashioned almost slip weight twall i think it's a slip weight twall because quite often what they did is they layered they layered um, this twall, like in the bodice piece of a slip. Anyway, yeah. Okay, and then this crinkly piece. Hi, Dar. Hi, 
Dixie. Okay, I'm going to swallow this. My try iodine. Wow. Because something we just found out a little, a few months ago. So if you're, if you um, take a, any kind of a Synthroid, you need to wait four hours before you can have minerals supplements. Um, anything, um, a multivitamin, anything like that, you have to wait four hours after. <laughs> so sometimes after learning this, you go, oh, well, I've been doing that wrong. But now that you have the information and I pass it on to you guys, yeah, it, yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, and here's a piece with a, oh, yeah, fleur de lis on it. And then she, uh, the, the pinky satin thing. And then she's got some blue down here. And then this is one of her coffee, tea stained coffee, whatever it is. One of her napkins. And there's a little bit of red. But see, on this here... The reason why, um, let me, is here, trash. Um, this was on the nap. This is why she chose of a Christmassy style is because of this little pointy setta. Pointy setta. And she went, she had obviously the, the pink and blue. I don't know. I don't know. I might use the blue. I don't know. But this is the kit. So, and then I got to thinking, I saw that and I go, you know, I could literally store that in that, this box. And I'm like, oh yeah. All right. So I will put this. Actually, I will fold it this way, and I will put it at the bottom if I ever decide to switch or have aggressively small pieces. I will put this. So you're going to watch me put this away. Okay, now, I know this is, okay, so this is the actual bottom. And let's see, she left the creases in. Letting me know that I have morning snack time. And I just do it this way and this way. Now, I think just for the interestingness of it, I'll just, when I'm done, I'll just lay this on the top or kind of kitty corner. All right, so all this stuff, but it occurred to me, let me put all the pink. That's a, got a soft, a very soft pink to it. Let me put the pink and blue. This is a bit of a lavender. I'll fold all of that and have it at the bottom because in, initially I'm less likely to use that um, quickly. I'd have to get, be more thought about how to mix. On the purple, because that was my mom's color, all shades of purple, I could do something like a little memory piece with her. And this, I like. Oh, man. It's like, oh. Okay, let's do this. Pinky. We'll do it that way. And... And with the red 
beads I bought from Shauna this last time. Anyway, um, my thought is I can take the pieces that Gila sent me and see here's some new trolls. Oh, I could, and oh, here's that one of the heart thingies. Oh, wow. And another pink thing. Actually, those go on top. I don't want those to get creased too much. All right. Oh, that fleur de lis. One of my favorite motifs. And there's that. Now, I won't likely forget that Shauna is the one who created this. But here's the little... You saw all of that. And this is why... Let me do this. Yeah, and so it's a Christmassy thing, and but yet still you can work it for other. Of course, I do Christmas all year round, so for me, and this is um, fabric. It feels fabricy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all fabric. Uh-oh, it needs to be glued. Okay. All right, I will stick this back on. But the um, idea that I just have now, I can, you saw the pieces I have in here from the Shauna kit. And what was on... Even this with the even this would be the the non the 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 pinky parts like I could do something with that. This is an obviously a napkin. Why did I have this out? I think I was going to cut I was gonna cut the birds I was gonna cut the flowers out and try to keep the butterflies and the bird. You know what? Let's just put that in there. Okay, now, as you saw, these pieces from um, Gila, I'm thinking that these and the neutral, here's like this, um, the old silver. Oh, love that. It's like vintage silvery. Oh. Okay, and there's, of course, a believe. And I'm going to even try to, let me, I had to throw one of the bags out, but this one I think is okay. Yeah, I don't smell anything weird. Okay, so then I have this, and this could be, used with um make a very interesting Christmassy colors because it's um well let's see how do I want to do this maybe if I triangle it yeah I think this fabric is slinky enough that the triangle works the best for it and those are stamps, <laughs> kind of funny. And here's, okay, and here's trim here. Get this on a, where the dangles are not gonna get funky eye. Funky, funky, anyway. This is gorgeous. This to me is an inspiration piece. Although I'd have to very strategically come back and maybe do 
it's on zigzag. And here's, oh, oh, ah, yeah. All right. These little, I love them. They're like little, they're kind of like a, a, a Mary Inglebright flower, you know, that, that kind of primitive style that she has of her basic three shape thing is kind of okay so this is all Gila on top and no these are not stamps these are this is for Gila this is from Gila as well these are I could um, fra I could fingernail polish them, I, and then fingernail polish them, and then maybe put on some of my um, Finnebear waxes. Here's the now this one because this I kept. I can fold that. Let's see, put this underneath because it might become a pocket. Okay, so now I've come, I've added Gila to this mix. And then make sure I got everything. Oh, I just love the way that lavender lilac um, oxide did. I just, oh, wow. Oh, anyway. Don't mind me. All right. So, wow. First time this thing has been full. <laughs> and now it's just like, oh, yes. <gasps> Ta-da! Now, if anybody else, um, the angel, I think, is paper clay. The angel is very almost... Uh, I think it's one of the paper clays. You know those, um, you know those um, peanut candies, the 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 kind of, they're orangey in color. It kind of the touch of it makes me. Do they call them peanut candies or a banana? They come in banana flavor, but it. But it kind of puts me in mind of those, of those candies. They're kind of like, um, oh man, I don't, but that's what it feels like. But I think it's the paper clay. This I think is, um, this could actually be hot glue for all I know. And these are, I'm assuming this is acrylic. Some kind of, she's obviously molded them. Oopsie. Very delicate. Okay. Now these might not be, she might not have done these. These white ones. Although there's a bit of a discrepancy here. So she might have done that. All right, now we can, oh, now, okay. Oh. All right, now, <laughs> all right, so the next thing that what I had, well, Donna, I need a place. The last item, I don't even know where it, this got kind of all my, it's got my nine and ten between quilting between needles. And this is just what I took out of my little sewing kit, my little sewing box. It was a former jewelry case. And I noticed because it has, um, oh, I know it has velvet and has beaded top. 
it has this olive green velvet. And I think it was tweed. It's gorgeous um, fabric on the base of it. And I noticed it needed repair in a few places. And I kept using it because I like it. And then I realized, you know what? It needs to go into a repair area. So this is what where I've had minus this. Um, I have my beeswax. And I actually have, I was working on, I'm transforming, I'm, this part of this fabric, I actually has already cut out and sewn onto one of my tops. I'm re, I'm redesigning my top, one of my, oops. and it, so yeah. But anyway, I need a place, and Shauna got me to think, and she was, so, and I bought this. I was hoping to save this. This is kind of William Morrissey, but not the last sale before I purchased this. And um, I tried to, because I wanted to salvage this, and I really can't do it. So I will, um, I did, because I, I pulled this part because I liked the um, underneath where, um, what the that netting the book netting that they use here and i see so you can see with the original line well i like the way that looked and I, I left it in there but the idea with this is i need a place where i can do i'll stitch in some fabric and paper things here and then i will do the paper phenomenon hidden hinge do a hidden hinge here and I hit I'll do some hidden hinges on the front and do little pa packets where I can little paper packets where I can stuff something I might have an impromptu um what is this oh that belongs in the Christmas box I'll start calling that Christmas box <laughs> Okay, it's a little, it's the dainty leaf part of that. I'll bug if APG Jamie hears this. It's like, she, I think I crack her up when I go like, oh, you know, I do the, oh, <laughs> okay. Oh. So, I wanted to show you now as I look at the touching fabric. I'm going to use this fabric, but what I'd like to do is to configure on all four sides, I want at least two inches. So, I can literally do some stitching. Because this is where I'm going to hold my needles. I'd be doing, um, yeah. And I need, because I've got a, quite a bit of stuff in here that I, I use for, um, yeah. I'm not quite sure. It might end up being a little on the size-wise elaborate. But it would actually go... Um, cause it's the same tone. It would actually go, um, with the, um, the old jewelry box that I need to mend. So we can be, and then I wanted to show you, and I, and then here I got to looking at the, these are all fabrics that not, yeah, the time before I bought from Shauna. And here, just this morning, I paired this up. And I'm thinking this will be, it's got, obviously, you can see the metallic. You can see the metallic in it. It's the grapes, grapes and grape leaves. And it's a Windsor collection by Hoffman. 
international fabrics. It's a screen print. I figured it was a screen print. I used to screen, scream, scream print. <laughs> I used to screen print. In fact, it was, I actually, in high school, in the, in the dark room, I took photography and part of, um, part of the photography class was learning how to screen print. And I never quite understood why he had us learn screen print in photography class. And I actually, he was one of those um, types of teachers that he left you, he didn't always tell you everything. You had to, he, I think he did it on purpose. It was part of his teaching style. And anyway, this, I got to looking at, and I go, yeah, oh, this would be gorgeous together. This, this right here, this would be gorgeous. And then to put this as part, some of my pages inside of my, this book here. And it would go along with this. It would go along with this fabric. I will have both paper. Um, and I was thinking of, I know other people have done them. And I've. Um, but um, Jean, the musical scrapper, she um, made me this, um, I haven't touched that in a long time, but she made me this book and she showed how to do it, but she would take a 12 by 12 piece of paper and she would fold it in different ways, fold it in half and then cut and make, make uh, pockets. and. That's probably the simplest way for me, both paper and fabric is just, you know, and then I have a, the basic, depending on what I need for the, yeah, but I go, okay, that's, that's good. Okay. I'm going to type in chat here. I want to just, I'll just type chat. Okay. So there's there's um a couple pages. Yeah. Now, what I'd like to do with this, of course, to me, I love this, and this is to me is tapestry, and. What I'm going to do, and I thought I would do some of this today. I just do the cut, the cut, the measuring and cutting of it. Oh, <laughs> I moved them. Hold on a minute. There we go. And um, this inspires me. I look at this and I go, my brain just goes, Ooh! Okay, now do I have, yeah, this is the bottom because it ends. This is the bottom of the piece. What I want to do, and I thought, yeah, because um, I need to do it. Oh, and I didn't bring my rulers. I need to go get my ruler. Hold on a moment. And cut. I don't know where my rose gold scissors are, so I'll, this is my other fabric scissors my less fancy scissors now I have to go get my ruler Almost back. Oh. Okay, okay. No, go with this foot first. All right. Oh, 
Okay, I keep this one by my bed all the time. Because I never know when I'm going to measure. <laughs> but the idea that I have with this, because I really like it and I want to be able to play with it a little bit. And I'm not, I don't know the, I don't know. But what I'd like to do is I'm going to take two inches off of each side. And so that they remain the same, um, I'm going to do two inches on the top first and two inches on the bottom. Do I want to save two inches? Well, that's three inches. So I wouldn't be losing a lot of the base here, the base container. All right, so I'll stick with two inches. The idea, and um, the idea, I love this, and this is inspiring, and, but I want a contrast. I don't want to go a weird contrast. And this is some more fabric that I got from Shauna the last time, the time before. And I've got two pieces of it. I want, I want to, once I get this cut down, I want to go in and do like an, an inch and a half strips on each side. And I'll do a log cabin, like a quilt, like the log cabin quilt des design, because that's actually, that's probably my, it seems, it's the, seems to be the quickest. You can't pre-measure a whole lot of stuff. So you, you know, you have to. I think maybe that's why I like it is that you can, and then you can get some really like, uh, um, an Amish people. I haven't, I need to actually, um, write down to check in. I haven't, I haven't kept myself. I wonder if they have like an Amish book on Amazon. I'll have to see it like Amish quilts to see if they have like a picture book. Because those inspire me too. And that's kind of puts me in mind. The on that maybe that's the connection too. Hold on a minute. Hold on. It's funny how certain things connect, but I need to check it, see if it's connecting properly. Hold on. Um, the way the Amish do their block, block quilts. Okay. All right. But this here, um, um, this is the guy who does the, some of this stuff. You know, I haven't even, but it's this, it's this kind of stuff that I tend, especially like when, um, Robin McClendon, she also likes this in jelly, um, in jelly printing um, from the jelly plate, the prints you get off of the jelly plate. Sometimes you don't know what to do with them. And she um, mentioned him and I had seen it off and on. Um, but anyway, stuff like this. And I know the Amish, or they did, I don't know if the, but now that's got me curious about if they still do those kind of, they take colors, bold, anyway. So that's where my brain went, just, you know. <laughs> but now I'm thinking this, I'm wondering, um, this disappears on me, this book. I keep it here and then to make a, cause I, t I seem to always, 
re reference it. But anyway, I want to take this because this is a contrast wise. Um, and in the mid-century modern, I've got a few antique pieces of furniture. I have a few pieces of um, uh, art deco. But everything else is pretty much mid-century modern. And this is not necessarily mid-century modern. <laughs> and neither is this. But this is where that eclectic comes into play. Because, you know, yeah. But color-wise, if I keep um, in the colors that I have, I have shades of blue, shades of green, I have black, I have shades of, you know, wood tone, the different browns of wood tone, and my existing storage is a lot of clear and opaque white. So, you know, I'm trying to stay within those colors, but then adding a few others. So anyway, so I'm going... Uh, I think I want, I want to, yeah, you're just going to have to let me indulge. I'm going to do the top. And what I'll do is when I cut, I'm doing the top first and I'm going to measure two inches. Oh, my flower fabric. Well, that's actually the design. That's actually the paper piece, the pattern itself. The flower is down here. I still haven't. And I was going to try to do something with this. And I was going to have this leftover little nest here kind of as the center. And I think I was going to do seed pearls on it. But, yeah. Okay strange things but it's sitting here on the and it went oh brother i just okay maybe not not talk so much all right let's get the two inches measured i think this works and what i'll do in order so i can keep the the grain the original grain because once these get cut off sometimes you lose the grain you lose the original direction. You can't, it's not always obvious. And even, even the grain testing that you do, you can do. Uh, I haven't done that in a long time. I'd have to look up the grain, the grain line, how to do the grain line. Okay, that's roughly two inches there. What I'm going to do is I'll put top, T for top and B for bottom. That way I'm keeping the orientation of the pattern. So this will be bottom. The B goes here. Because that's the cut line. And this is top piece. I'll just put the word top. And that way, when I... Also the orientation of that is... Let me flip this around. I'm working in a small space here, the bigger piece of fabric. All right, now two inches here. And at this point, it's not a super, I have to be kind of, I'll, I have to line it up with here. It might not be a, exactly the two in. I'll do my best. Okay. Okay, and I think I'll go ahead and cut this piece. So they have the B for bottom, and then I have the top, and that's the that's the correct orientation. So I'll cut this, and then I will um, keep these pieces together so that I actually have I know because if I have a potential idea for them, but I don't know. And I want to, on this particular fabric, because it's so obviously directional, I want to 
that's why I'm taking the time, ouch, I'm taking the time to, um, you know, mark bottom and top. And I may hand sew this. That'll potentially give me Okay, so now we go to the bottom of the piece. <laughs> the one fabric has got so many. Oh, I wonder if that would be, oh man, that would be an interesting, very delicate. All right, so we're gonna two inches here, two inches, pretty much two inches. Where's my pen? Pen. Yo, pen. All right, pretty much two inches. Now on this one, it will be rather obvious where the butt. All right. And I can put this piece, these four four strips, I can actually put them into this little container here and um, I mean they could, I could take some of my, um, okay that's 45 minutes, seriously, oh. okay I'll do another 45 minutes. It's not quite 11 o'clock here. So match here and do my best to match that line. It's a little off. Okay. And before I cut, so this is, let me orientation here. Let me get the, so this is now, I cut from the top. So this is the top of the piece. Cause see here, top cut. And even though this tells me that this was, even though this tells me that it was the bottom of the container, um, you know, now I could, I have the blue fabric and I could do something funky. I could do some, what, where is it? Oh, it's in there. Shibori gift wrapping paper and make once I do that, but that's blue and I wouldn't necessarily want blue. Well, it just varies. If I could, the Shibori wrapping paper that I have would actually coordinate with the blue. Where's the blue fabric? It would actually coordinate with this here. And the, the, the part that is more aqua in this, it might actually bring out, it might be more, end up being more aqua-y in the long run. Because this, is, my brain's thinking. My brain is thinking. Okay, so this is the top. And this is the bottom. So I will put bottom. That way, I have both, both, um, I have, okay, so now I cut this piece, and then I do the sides. That way, um, the idea being that the two, the top and the bottom, are the same size, the same length, and then the sides will end up being the same length as well. And that way, when I go to use them again, if I use them as is, I mean, I could literally do a six by six square of this, lay it on a black piece of a black or a different shade of blue, 
and then come back and put this as the frame strip. And then I could actually hang these in the same area. I, yeah, I could hang these in the same area. That's an idea. Or I could go totally interesting, do a six piece, or sorry, six inches of this in block form, and then maybe some kind of a, a shades of pink, like the fuchsia, magenta, no, not, not fuchsia. Fuchsia is more purple, but the magenta, get a, a magenta print or something. And then, then do this. Welcome back, Judy. And then do this. And then you've got using some of the same pieces, but yet they're not, they're the same, but not the same. I'm trying to think if I have any really. Okay, so I've got this marked. Yeah, you know, that's the top cut. And I all right, so, and this is the same. This is a little time consuming what you're doing, but if you think it out in advance like this, um, when you go to use the piece, <laughs> you're going to have things will eventually match up. Now, I still have. So even though the even though the bottom is now trimmed off of this container, I still have the bouquet part and I have this up here and this here that is kind of the vision, you know. And then you have this is like um it's it's tapestry um needlepoint kind of cross stitchy that's kind of what the fabric looks like is it the what the the cro what they call cross stitch fabric cuz you the weave here the way that's what it kind of looks like and i would probably take i have i'm one that has all different kind i'm still working on getting silver in the various shades of gray but I have, I'm one of those people who have kind of all shades, the yellow gold, the old gold, all, all in the embroidery floss. Yeah, because I just, and this one would call for that. Would call for like that using different shades of gold. And I could actually accent this here, this piece. you know yeah anyway we're cutting the sides we're, okay so here we're cutting the sides so this one is going to be and I will actually let me get the two inches marked in The orientation is this is the top this is inside this is the inside piece and this is also I'll put side okay so I have inside this is where I would hit this would be the hem this is the top and this is a side piece. All right, so I've got that marked. Okay. Yep, and these will all get stored together, these strips. The black fabric, black fabric, 
I don't, did I, did you give me black fabric? Did I buy it? Was it a print? Was it one of the quilting? Um, I have the blue. Um, hello, by the way. Grayish one. Let me go see. One moment, please. And let me see. Do I have the one moment, please? Do oh, I have the button? Oh, yeah. There. One moment, please. You know what? I'm going to. Oh, and by the way, Gila, Gila stuff is on top, but this is where the little napkin kit is being held inside. A box. Okay, I wanted to, ah, come on, don't do that. All right. I, okay, this is... Uh, I, I need to get these out of my way. I don't want to crash them. All right, hold on. Ouch! Oh, ow! Ow! I'm talking to myself. I'm talking through some discomfort here. Okay. These to go here. Now, I don't recall any other fabric in the last, not in the, but this is what, and I have the, t the tapestry pieces and that, Let's see, gray, gray, blacky, gray, black. I have that. Brown, the purple. And then I have the, the um, crosshatch blue. Oh, this, I haven't got to it yet. This one. Yeah, I'm going to, once I get this, what I'm working on, I'm going to start my cover. I'm going to start the cover. But I wanted, as I was thinking about it. Okay, so, all right, so I need to cut the side piece. And then they get stored together. I think I fell in love with cherries. It was the year we, well, I lived two years total in Nebraska. The one year was when my parents were divorced. And then, they, of course, they got remarried. But anyway, that was the one year. I lived in Omaha, and that was an experience. And then, when my dad, when the fighter jets became, he was, he worked for the government. He was one of the exclusive, um, he was one of the exclusive maintenance guys to the, to the fighter jets. And he was a mechanic and he's an exclusive, he was an exclusive um, mechanic. He was wherever the fighter jets went, he went. Um, when he, when they became extinct, when those fighter jets became extinct, um, lost his job, there was only, I think there was four mechanics where we were, where we lived. I think there were four, maybe five mechanics and by law, <laughs> they had to be a very tight knit 
group, <laughs> bylaw or else. But anyway, that's government. And I, I understand why, but yeah, sometimes it was a little claustrophobic. But anyway, then, okay, so I've, I've cut on this one because there's no fraying whatsoever. So this is the last side. I just wanted to cut this down because I've been thinking about, because this is, it's like my tapestry. I have a fruit tapestry. It's like, okay. And I, and if I have this cut and I, but I want to be able to use this fabric elsewhere just because now, anyways, um, the year, then we lived, uh, we lived a year. He was out of a job for a year. They put him on a, they, um, they put him on a, uh, a list, a very short job list. <laughs> Basically he was, um, uh, the, because of his previous job, he was put on, um, he had priority and it took a year for them to, um, to get him a job, but we moved to McCook where my grand his grand, his parents. So yeah. And that was the year of the hippies. Oh, my giggles. And the police department. But that's the year I think I fell in love with cherries. Because we had cherry trees on the street that we lived on in McCook. Yeah, that's the house. I've told you before, that's the house that had that big, weird painted eye. And it it, it would never go away. <laughs> and that's the... That's the house that had the laundry chute that my brother got mad at me <laughs> and tried to stuff me down the laundry chute. And it's a, let's just say um, it's a good thing that um, there was um, things that I could hold on to. Because <laughs> he <laughs> anyway. <laughs> inside this is the inside cut <laughs> yeah needless to say i um yeah this is the inside cut <laughs> this is a side piece <laughs> and this is the bottom the, i'll go top because i did top before yeah um i don't know what i did to make him mad <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that prior to us, it, let's just say the house that we, we rented, um, the owner learned his lesson and <laughs> my dad, the rent was, cause this was beautiful half front porch. It was one of those old, I think it, not, it wasn't, it wasn't quite Victorian and it could have maybe been a little bit of craftsman style but it's just one of those old houses that you see in pictures and the rent was very cheap because my dad was he he did woodworking and so and let's just say the hippies lived in that house <laughs> Let's just say that house was registered with the local police department as well as maybe even the FBI. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> it could have easily been, yeah. <laughs> and the the police had to come in and teach my dad. <laughs> and actually as kids, because you know, being kids, you get you you end up finding stuff as a kid. So we had to learn. We had to learn <laughs> what not to touch and what you could touch in terms of drugs and, you know, you know, contraband anyway. <laughs> yeah, that house was a trip. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the year that I fell in love with the, just the look of cherries.
because we had cherry and we got to pick. And of course, being kids, we couldn't pick by ourselves. Of course, that was one of those, oh, let's do it. Mom and dad are gone. So let's just go pick cherries. And of course, you climb up the tree and then if you get caught, you're dead meat, you know. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that house was a trip. Uh, they had made it, the guy had turned it into four apartments. My brother had his own apartment. That was a little bit of a bone of contention, but he was two years older than me and he wasn't allowed to use the stove or anything, but he had his own bathroom, his own kitchen. And it was one of those, like a studio apartment. And he had the, um, the bathroom and the kitchen was at the back of the house and Hi, Joan. And um, he had his own door. He had his own door, his own front door and back door thing. And let's just say my brother had some, because of that, he had some strict things to abide by. <laughs> and sometimes, of course, <laughs> he just looked at me and I go, okay, I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> Cause he, uh, cause uh, to say, I know from experience that there was a time when we lived, I remember one of the things I, I got in trouble for it because my parents had to follow through on the punishment, the consequences. Um, but I actually saved my life, but I, my parents said, thank you for saving your brother's life. But that doesn't mean you have to be punished. You have to, you have, cause you did something wrong. You went against what we said, but if I hadn't followed him, he would have been dead. But anyway, <laughs> this was in California and oddly enough, I was like three years old. And I remember this and something just said, follow your brother. My brother was what? Five. No, he was in first grade. No. My, so yeah, he could have been five, six years old. Cause yeah. But anyway, uh, we, it was in the trailer court. We, we were, you know, the trailer courts and there's this, and this is where all the campers and my dad was also the rent was because my dad, because he had security clearance because of his job, because of with the fighter jets, he had security clearance. So he was, um, and we, we were the last trailer. And so anyway, he, as part of the rent agreement, he, was they asked him because it was far enough. It was at the far corner of the trailer court near the school. And so it had more activity because of this, because it was right up, butted up against the school grounds. So it had more activity and there was um, people traveled. So they always kept, my dad was always, um, yeah, we were always, our family always um, made sure that everything was okay. Okay, so there's the new piece that I'm going to turn. I might have to decide because if I do two inches of this and start with the side piece, I was thinking if I had any left or if I could do it in such a way that I could turn this as the finished piece because this would be okay together as well. And this would be the high contrast as far as this is concerned. And then this would, this is more together in the same, but the book comes first. So, but now I've got that cut and I'll go ahead and put these pieces in and I'm going to go ahead and keep the, the bottom, keep the original. Okay. Now I can, but anyway. And the reason why um, I just had, uh, anyway, my brother would get himself uh, in California. He got, I don't know what was on his mind, but he disobeyed my, my parents. And we were not supposed to go beyond. But he climbed, he had a way of climbing over and I watched him. And I, I'm like shaking my head and I'm going, oh my word. I'm th thinking, I can still remember this, three years old, roughly three years old. And I'm thinking, 
oh man, you know, I'm staring, I'm staring clear of this kid. My, my brother, I don't know what he was doing, but I don't know about three minutes later, something just said, well, I know what, you know, but anyway, I just follow him and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to get in trouble. Follow him. What had happened is because this is one of the reasons why it's dangerous out there. We haven't had the time to explore and to let you know where the paths you can walk and what you can't do with this and that and the other thing. And I don't know if they have snakes in California. I forget now. We were, where were we, where were my dad stationed? It had to have been near an Air Force base. And I'm not going to mention where we were, were born. But anyway, um, but anyway, um, I'm like, oh. And I was dragging my feet. But anyway, if I hadn't done what had happened is that there was the seven up bottle and it had he had slipped and the, the bottle was broken because, you know, you get homeless people, people out there, younger kid, older kids smoking, doing stuff they're not supposed to do. And, you know, you don't know. And my, like I said, my parents hadn't had time, hadn't had time to um, figure things out can make notes on here. This is fabric. Um, I'll put him with a fabric strip, a fabric scissors with a fabric strip. Okay. Now measure. Okay. It's down here. Pin. And I'm getting back to the other one in the years later but the one in california what had happened is he had slipped and he had fallen off this little edge he hadn't seen there was this path and there's this tuff of grass and there was just enough of a ledge where he stepped and he was just playing around but someone had they had had a, like a party a beer party and they had broken glass and stuff and he actually could have very easily bled to death but um because he fell on that broken it was a broken beer bottle and there was like a seven up bottle and you know mix of seven up and beer bottles but they, it was i remember they were green but anyway um we're looking at one two three four five six seven and uh is that the five eights it's the mark just before a force okay i'll go with five eights Seven and five eighths tall and widthwise, we're looking at so 12. I'll just call it 12 and a half. It's just a little shy of 12, 12 and a half long. Okay, so what I'm going to do because I want to be able to stitch on this. Anyway, the, so if I had followed him, he would have, you know, very easily bled to death. And I was able to tell him, I saw him and I says, okay, I'm going to go get mom because dad was at work. So I'll go get mom. And so I got mom and my brother was like, man, he knew, I mean, you know, he made the choice. He made the choice. And of course I got, because I just, I knew something was wrong. I followed him and I had, to, even though I had saved his life, I still had to be the, I had to take the consequences because I had broken, I had broken the rule. And Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for making sure that your brother is safe, but you still broke the rule. I'm like, I'm thinking, but you know, they had to do it because they, as parents, they had to follow through on what they said. If they had not done that, then, you know, it would have been, it just would not have been appropriate. So they had to follow through. 
All right. So what I'm what I was looking at is just because I want to stitch on it. I just want to have that. And this is going to hold needles and this is going to have, like I said, it's going to have um, fabric and paper stuff here. So, um, but I also want to do some paper phenomenon hidden hinges here and probably here. Um, and this, like I mentioned earlier, this fabric would actually also, this out the side fabric would actually be gorgeous with the um the 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 little sewing kit box that I the the that was the one that I told you that I emptied everything out because it had to be mended. Okay, so what I'd like to do is to have two inches where on all sides two inches of this fabric where it's just not this but it's just a flexible stuffing and it still has to be so actually that wouldn't be that wouldn't be right the easiest way for me to do it would be to lay this out and then take another piece of fabric and sandwich this in once I have it padded the way I want. So I'm going to go two inches here. That's the, they had the end piece where they, they automatically sewed there. And I think I want to keep this on the bottom, this little, the original fray. I'll keep that on the bottom. So I have to mark two inches here, two inches here. And once I get the two inches, I'll leave like a half inch just for stuffing purposes. Cause I want this to be stuffed. Okay, so two inches now. It's been quiet, you know, no one's really talking, which is really okay. I don't mind. I don't need my channel to do anything specific, you know. Now, let's see. I've got, I'm going to mark on this side. So let me fold. This will be easier in the space that I have here at the table. This is the original size of my seven and five eighths tall, 12 and a half long. Oh, okay, so two inches. I wonder, do I want three inches? Or two and a half, two and a half. Actually, no, let's mark two. Like I said, okay, two first. Okay, I have to stand up for this one. And that's two inches. And then a half inch. I'll use a half inch as a gusset area just for stuffing and just basically miscellaneous space. Okay, now all right. We're going to flip this over and do the same thing on this side. And now I'm now I'm wondering if I want to put that striped fabric. But I liked the idea. The only thing is I did like the idea of having those two together. These two here together. In terms of a, the, the shimmy grape fabric as well as a stripe. I really actually like these together. And I was thinking of having them as pages. 
but there's a little more of this and this is thicker. So this could actually be, um, I wonder now, I'm thinking I could do a two inch off of this and two inches off of this combine them together, cover them with, I could, um, once I have them together, sewn together, iron them, and they could actually be a roll, a story of something that I want to keep together, but separate. And then I would have that as a moving piece and a, mo a moving piece inside my other, so it core inside my little, the jewelry box that I use as my little stitching. Or if I decide to use that, uh, Judy saw it, the round box or that I sh first showed. If I decide I could, that's a moving piece and it would, this would be, and then I could turn this into the um, inside cover piece that I lay down and match with this. And this could become accent. Okay. That, that could be how I do. Okay. So this is two inches. Did I mark that already? Yeah, I did. No, so now a half inch. And I could force Shauna into coming up with a story. <laughs> I could do that. That is perfectly okay. You guys understand you don't have to talk. And I was just mentioning for the people... This is actually a rather low key day. Now, I've got the two inches. And this is the bottom. So we're here, here's the cover. Now, so then I do two inches and the half. Do I want, if I were to do that, I wouldn't necessarily need the extra half inch on the top and bottom. Because typically, any in my experience, when I stuff a book, the stuffing goes this way. It doesn't, it's very rare that it goes top and bottom. It will squish left to right quicker than it will top to bottom. Okay, so the next marking I do is the bottom marking. So two inches on the bottom. Uh, just, you know, stuff come down. This would be a, a miss stamp here. I could take some paper. And this is, these are the ornate. What is this called? Um, tiled quad cube. TC54. It has, it's just various um, ornate. This is like a four, this is four corner fleur de lis. See, that has, um, it's one that I absolutely, uh huh. This one I haven't used before, but it's just, this one's more of a traditional style tile. Um, but I've used the other three quite a bit. But this would be gorgeous with this fabric as this stamp here, all four of these would be gorgeous taking um, paper um, and tea dyed paper, whatever kind of paper and using this as a stamp towards that. This would be gorgeous and it would accent this paper. Okay, the next thing I was doing was the bottom because this is truly the because that's the original fringe when they
manufacturing. The manufacturing. Okay, where's the pin? Seriously. I know I, I was just mentioning that this is obviously a low key day. Um, the pin. Um, no, that's that's a pin top that covers that sharp knife. It's um it's a Japanese ink technique that you um you carve the paper. I still have a look. Yeah, it's the Japanese ink. You know, I have these inks. And this is the... Oh, this is my tea and... I think I've told you, this is my tea and coffee brush. I take paper and I brush it on paper. And that's the only thing I use it for. With my original one, I don't know what happened to, but then this one, obviously I used it for paint at one point, but once I turned it into my coffee tea brush, it's never had anything else other than coffee and tea, but I actually brush and because it's on a slant and you get this interesting texture and I put it on a wet board and I would just brush tea and coffee onto the pa paper let it dry, then do it again. But anyway, this is this is um, a tip, and I don't know if I showed you this, but and here, here's the, and supposedly these sharp little bits, they fit into here, and you cut. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I have other nibs. The nibs, where is in the original? I think they were in here. I have other size nibs. I think they were at the bottom. Yeah. There's a couple more nibs in here. And then I have Windsor ink. But I'm not sure. But it, I looked it up. And it's, um, it's a very definite. Um, they use it. I don't know what it's called now. I forget. But anyway. I need to look it up. And see if I can with it but that is because I have that pin on that sharp nib yeah this is something I'm going to do um hi dot is um I want to clean it up make sure it's clean and then trim off anything that like I could trim off to here but see this is gorgeous gorgeous shimmy right there i could take lace i could take a piece of paper here first put some printed paper i could put lace strips and make a little and this is recycling this is the dark chocolate sea salt caramel kettle cooked oh they're so delicious oh, say they're delicious mm. And, but I see it because this is gorgeous and I see the, yeah, I have this kind of orangey red, both in dull and shiny. And then I have a purple and I'm actually have, I'm going to have, and I, cause, um, uh, I was thinking about doing a little swatch piece for Shauna, the one with the purple edges to Okay, that goes with the ink because this is recon. This it's not wasted because it's in there and it can be re, re wetted, reconstituted. Now, pin. We'll just get my my pin out of here. Okay, now two inches. So it's 12 and a half. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So basically, right there. Oh, wow. That's basically 18, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I don't know. Gonna need one side of it. 
Okay, but I need to cut. This is the... Okay, now I put the book here. And this is how I get the top. Okay, so here is the right there. Literally flat, it probably becomes 12 and 3 fourths. Okay, so literally flat. So then I come up here and it looks like two inches right there. All right. Oh. This will be the easiest because I'm using the book. This is going to be the most precise marking of the whole thing. Okay, there's the top. And now to the side. And I'm going to go ahead. So two and a half. So two and a half. Instead of two on this side here. Okay, can I do that on air? Let me see here. Now, I'm trying to decide while I'm sitting here, I'm trying to decide whether I want a full. Do I want stacked paper for my stuffing or a combination of paper and fabric? The paper would be crinkly. Okay. What time is it? All right. Let's. Oh, you don't need to see my password. I'm. This is the first phone I've ever had a password on. Um, let's change it to a half an hour. Change it to a half an hour. We'll at least get this cut. All right, so I've got that for now. This goes back into my book. So I know that it's in here. My daily journal. Okay, now. So I could, once I get everything cut, once I get everything cut, yeah, so I have to, I had to also allow, I was thinking I have this, and it's still crumpled. I think this was in the top of Shauna's last purchase that I made from her. But it's crumpled to the point but I could fold it, and because it's still crumpled, I could fold it, and it could become here, stuffing for the top, as well as stuffing in the inside. But I don't think I want the stuffing on the inside. Maybe down here on the bottom pocket, I could do a place where I could do um I don't know that might be a little too fussy my thought but this paper here this crumpled paper is sitting there right now fabric scissors it's sitting there right now and hi April Yes, I have a very old, I've made all kinds of different weird leather from paper. I have, um, actually over on, um, I, I still have my Flickr account because it's basically my blog. <laughs> my husband pays the price a year for it now. The price, yeah, has gone up. But anyway, um, here goes. Oh, I'm before I cut, 
I'm going to need at least. So yeah, we're good. It's within that 18, that half yard. Okay, so a half yard for this book. But remember I said I wanted, I don't, this is one thing I don't like doing, but I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do it because it, it would bug me. So let's see, the rain, I guess with art, it doesn't, my mouse, I guess, I guess with art, it doesn't matter if the grain, the grain is correct or not. But for me, I don't like leaving a chunk. Some people just cut what they need and, but for me, I have to have that. <laughs> I'd rather have two people. Do I go this all the way or do I do the top all the way? I would probably end up, I'd probably better do it this way. I'll fold it this way because I have that. This length is in the, from what I see is the right grain. And this chunk down here. I can make a, I can make a matching, I could go um, color. It seems like I'm going to be going in greens. So I could match this with, oh, wow, the chartreuse. Okay, hold on a minute. I didn't bring it in. Hold on. Now, to some people, to some people, it might be very, oh, my stars, what are you thinking? See, I'm, I'm pre-thinking ahead. On the surface, these don't necessarily, some, now, see, I would put these together, these here. But this square down here, see, I'm, this is I'm, before I cut, I'm thinking. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to cut because I need to keep my, my, my eyeball sanity. <laughs> I'll cut this way on the top all the way across instead of going cutting from the bottom top. And this way I have this, ch I'll have this chunk once it's that once the book shape is cut out I'll have this chunk that see here I can take the chartreuse and they're two very different styles and I could take a strip and I could actually make a um another roll of some kind that I can separate, roll, separate, or I can make a, a needle a stick pin. You know, I can place where I put straight pins when I'm doing a project. I can do a little something with, and I can just very boldly take a two or three inches of this, two or three inches of this, right down that center, iron it, do it off maybe in white or some of my um, jersey, my cotton jersey as the backing so it's malleable. Yeah, see, okay. So uh, then I will keep this, all of this together because then this would, I can do something, even this, even this would is rather interesting together. And I could turn this 
into some coordinating accents. And this could still remain the inside piece and potential accent with what's left. Because I'm gonna, I, I said I was gonna cut like a two inch strip here, two inch, sew them together, make a roll piece. All right, so the, okay. And then I could take something like, something like a black, a very bold black and white, even with the grape, because that has black in it. In the center of where these two come together, I could place, oh, it's got a hair. That's another way I keep ribbon. I use a, um, a hairpin instead of a, uh, see that could go right down the center of where these two connect. That doesn't look quite, quite right with this, but it looks nice with this combination. So my brain's thinking. Yeah, anyway, I have, I have, it was a quite popular. I don't know now. I haven't been over there for a long time. But like I said, I, my husband pays for it every year because it's like my blog. Um, I have like that back in the day, we, that's where we were. That's, um, that's where we were. Okay. So I move this and I'll get this folded from side to side. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm trying to stop a sneeze. Okay. I'm folding it back. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody. Okay, so this is the top. And lay that down. So I'm not, well, if it's crooked, it's crooked. You know what I mean? You know, at some point. Okay, so here's the cross P. Scissors. Okay, here goes. I'm cutting the top of the book. Oh, <laughs> okay. We don't want to cut that. I love these little leaf motif, but it does not show up on the front. You can just a little bit here, but not, not much. You have to go looking for it. All right, now we can, okay. And this is what I have, the, this is the bigger piece of what I have left. And I don't know what I'll do with this. That piece I probably won't use. But, okay, now I cut this. And this is the piece that will go with the chartreuse. And then you have to think, what would blend? If I decide, either way this would work. If I go with the round, big container the Harry David container. I think that's what it was. Okay, so this is my book cover. And this is the piece that I will put with the chartreuse and see what I can come up with. Actually, actually let's do it this way. Okay. Now, oh, ouch. I feel like your finger getting stuck in that. Now, this is where this goes. 
Did my thing just go off? Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. And I, oh, okay, I'm fine. I, I'm, yeah. Don't mind me. I'm just you know, talking. Okay, that looks more than two inches now. Oddly enough, that looks more, more, looks more like three inches here. But here's the original half. Isn't that funny now that, but you know what? I'm going with what I have. I'm not going to, if this ends up being, see, that looks, that looks more like three inches. Because here's the, here's the point. Here's where the bottom and the top, the side meet. Sorry, the side and the top meet. And that's the corner of where the book goes. So. So, the, oh, well. And then this piece, I might not have much left of this, but that's what I think this is the front. This is the back. So this is going to go in the center or in the, oh, brother, on the inside. And it will be, I'm going to have to get rid of that white. That was a manufacturer. They have sometimes on certain fabrics, they have, they go in and do their weird manufacturer things every three or four yards on certain fabrics. Okay, so I will have a little left for accents throughout the book. But wow, not much, which is actually, hey, and the fact that I'm like, oh, Shauna, I'm using, oh, wow, I just, oh, good, I, I'm having my leftover breakfast, my Mondays, my husband went out and got us breakfast on Monday, Labor Day, and I didn't eat it all, so I think that's, that's the most quickest way, so that's going to be the inside. So now what I need to do is I need to get the inside cut so that I don't know. I think it was Vaughn, my reindeer, who sent me these. And I use them for marking. And you can also use them on um, make sure they're no on the jelly plate as well. Yeah. This is the inside. And I think, which way do I want to do it? I feel that this, oddly enough, even though it's a striped, this is the top. This was the top. I'm going to go with that gut. That good, 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 good. Now, okay, and the quickest for me is literally to do this. <laughs> Forget any more measuring. I think I'm done measuring for now, although there's just things that you cannot. And in this case, because of the striped orientation, I'm going to go. I'm going to actually, let's see, how precise am I over on this side? Because it's striped. Yeah, I will use this as my cut mark right there. It'll be just a little bit, a smidgen of adjustment. And also I'm cutting this way because it is striped. And I can potentially use that orientation as an accent. In fact, well, I don't know. The bottom. <gasps> Ooh. See, I have then I have the horizontal of the stripes or the portrait. This is the portrait. And along with that grape. 
which one I'm almost thinking that the horizontal stripes would look best. Although the horizontal, you know what? No, that's no. The, oh, no. I was thinking the great. I'm thinking the horizontal would be best. I think the horizontal stripe would actually be cuter alongside here. For the roll. Okay, my brain. It's thinking. It's okay. Now, did I cut that off? Oh, yeah, I did. Where did I put the piece of fabric? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. I'm here. I was, okay. Oh, I must have moved the mouse. Okay, now. Oopsie. Adjustment. Adjustment time, make sure. Accurate. Now. Cutting. We're going to cut again. Oh, hey, there's my pen I was looking for earlier. Now. Uh, this way, if I... I don't know if I can fringe that. Oh, I don't want to cut the fringe. The fringe. I'm eyeballing it now. Lay it down. I may... I, I don't know if I can fringe the bottom of this. This particular it's woven in such a way that it might not it's a solid a solid enough weave that it might not fray well. I might have to work at the frame. Okay, now all right. This is the inside, this is the outside. All right, so now this is where I make a decision, things you step on, in an art room. <laughs> What's the most oddest thing you have in your art room right now? Do you really wanna answer that? Do ya? Ho, ho, ho. All right, so let's see. I'm going to. Okay, there's this. And this gets right there. Now. We've got basically nine minutes. <laughs> And that, when that goes off, chances are we're going to, like, go, okay, we'll see you later. Oh, the paper, the crunchy paper. Now, wait a minute, upside down. Don't want to do that. You think, oh, what's the difference? Well, first of all, I know it would bug the tar out of me. <laughs> it would bug the tar out of me. Trust me on this. Oh, and I better get the spine measurements before I, because you know, you know, you've created it. So we're looking at one, not a full one and a half. So actually, no, one and a half. I would, and then just a that, yeah, it's actually on a tight, it's more than one and a half, but a loose I'll mark down a loose one and a half. Loose one and a half spine. Okay. So there's that information. Now. I think I actually want the crinkly so it's just a matter of
Okay, this will be the first. And the idea is you glue it. In this case, I just typically, I glue the, I glue it down so it, I glue the first down and then I start stuffing. And I have to say, oh, so long, farewell. I didn't even take a photo of it. All right. Oh. <laughs> well, nothing like opening a new glue stick. Sure, why not? Oh, ouch. Glue sticks, front and center. Okay, oh, wow, the poor guy there. Where are my Xandra glue sticks? They're different. No, that's not what I mean. Oh, well, ouch. That hurts. Ow. Note to self. Ouch. That hurt. Don't keep rulers. Ouch. Oh, there it is. So that one definitely goes back by the bed. I have one by the bedside and one here. And I, because it's a clear ruler in the way I have it stored, I didn't see it. <gasps> oh, well. All right, here goes. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the sewing area. Do not get, well, hopefully it should, oh man, this glue stinks, but whew, this glue stick stinks. And it tastes horrible, trust me. I accidentally ended up tasting it one day. Yuck. Oof. That's a, actually, this is one of those that actually has a fourth inch gusset on the spine. I'll have to make a note of that. You don't see it on from the inside, but here I tend to make four inch gussets. Other people do a eighth inch gusset, and sometimes they end up paying for it. <laughs> okay, I think I've got enough Blech. glue. Glue. Blech. Blech. Glue. And I move my mouse again. Oh, man. Oh, do not glue it up there yet. You will not. All right. The did 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 press from the gussets. The gussets get glued first. Get pressed first. Spine next. Now. <gasps> Ooh. Oh wow. I can't go just strictly to the kitchen. I have to go to the bathroom because now I got. Bleh, bleh. More glue. More glue. La 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 la. Oh, I might put someone to sleep if I start. La 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 la. la. Okay. The glue does not have to be perfect. And the more I go. It may or may not crinkle, but, you know, that's okay. I might, I don't know. Do I want the inside? I could do, if I cushioned the front inside cover then I wouldn't be putting, I wouldn't necessarily put a hidden hinge. 
Now, I think I'm recycling. Shauna recycles. I recycle. But anyway, Judy. <laughs> okay, I'm here. I'm actually finally finishing it. This is hilarious. Over on the Flickr, it used to be very popular. I had a, um, went into a, I had several pictures and I, um, I went into um, detailed instructions on how I created this leather paper, the faux leather. <laughs> and it was actually quite popular. Anyway, so now I finally finished that sentence. What about, it took me, what, a half an hour? Uh, okay. Okay, now. Are we there yet? I don't know. Some I glue, some I don't. And I'm hoping, I don't know. The, the idea is this is what's going to be close to the fabric. So I don't want this part, see, I want it to be poofy. And so it doesn't get much glue. And see, this is why I'm... Now... I haven't made scrunchy paper for a while. The last time I made, well, I kind of, I don't know. I scrunched it throughout the process several times and then straightened it out and then crunched it, straightened it out, did more art on it. That was like, like November, December when I did that. Okay, we're almost out the door. Oh, no, come on. And I'll leave this to make a little bit of accent paper for, um, do some stamping to do some accents in them to coordinate. So I'll put what's left over here by the fabric. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, now. Now here, we're going to at least get this attached to the cover. Somehow, we're going to get we're going to get it attached. We're going to get the we're going to get this attached to the cover. Now here, as you can see, I'm gluing this. Where, where's the edges? Here's the edge here oh no that okay now this gets and here's the edge of the book cover okay now from here on nothing gets glued I just need to uh, all this. Actually, it's going to get tucked. So, no, I'm, I'm right. It's a good thing I kept that part because this is the back of the book. Okay, so here I'm at the edge here where the fabric, the point where the this and this meets. And that's where the corner of the book goes. And I don't know of anyone else. You guys probably know your two streams next. I used to know, but there's so many people who stream these days that it just, you know what? That's going to bug me, even though I know it's going to be covered. It's going to bug me. So guess what? 
just glue it back down. I Like I said, I tried salvaging the cover paper and it didn't work. All right, so here is what it's going to look like now. This all gets tucked in. And it's definitely going to crinkle. Oh, wow. Oh, don't. Don't you mess with me. I do need to tack it down here and there. So I need to tack a little, I need to do a little bit of glue. Good, that's dry already. I don't, is that gonna be flexible? Hopefully it will. I will have to put a little glue here. So it's, so it's tacked down. Just to, so I know that it initially stays. There's the front tack down, and I'll tack down, oops, and I just shifted that size, but that's okay. All right, and this, having, I get this, and I can start the sewing process, and the idea that I have here is I also... Once I get the inside fabric laid down, I tack that down. Okay, yeah, see, it's like, it's, yeah. See, it doesn't very rarely goes from the top to bottom. It squishes out to the left to right. Now, that's the, that's the back side. This, and I think I goofed, but you know what? It's okay. I'm not going to get hyper about it. And I am on the corner. Yes, I have it on the corner. Okay. And and I know I have a half inch here. It's not marked. I only marked it on this side here. But I'm glad I did that because it, like I said that I added the half inch here because that was the, that, 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 um, it helps. It's, it's a natural gusset for the stuffing. Now, make sure all this is matched up. Okay, now glue stick. Do I want fabric? I, you know what? Even though it's more, do I want, I'm decision making. I haven't played with my fabric glue yet as much as I would like to. I'm more familiar with this. So I'm going to basically do the glue in one stroke all the way down so it's similar and then one on the edge and then and then just gently and it should be okay in terms of 
because I can, the, the um, burrow stitching that I'm going to do here will probably go clear up to the edge. And I can even do some gentle stuffing here if I want. We'll see. No, Dixie, the stripe is on the inside. Hold on, I'll show you. And I'm not doing, I'm not gluing any of this. I gave myself about an inch approximately, I eyeballed it an inch here because I don't like when I'm stuffing a cover on the front cover, I don't like gluing in the spine area. So I try to give it about an inch. That's just something that I have found for me that um, a lot of people, they're, they don't stuff their covers, and so they don't know. And I've stuffed enough of my, <laughs> you know, I've stuffed frames and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of, okay, now this gets smoothed out from the, this way. And remember, see, I did the same thing here. I had one stroke down near here, but I did the same glue marks all the way. Now. And this will stay flexible for the stitching. You know, um, and that just now. Um, Okay, I need pins. Hold on here. I'll need pins. And I took them back. Pins, straight pins. I don't think I have any. Ow! Oh, don't mind me. I'm singing. Oh, yo! Oh. Mm. Binder clip. Come on, little binder clips. Where are you? Oh man, seriously, you're not here where I when I want you. Just how inconsiderate are you? Oh, there's more paper. <laughs> so it goes over there. Well, let's see. Straight. Oh, here. And a random stamp. All right, so. Let's, oh, one of my all-time favorites. I do like the copper, but these suckers are expensive. Okay, now. Straight pens would be better, but I, my straight pens are in that little, container that I took back to the bedroom to get it out of my way. And, oh, wow. All right, let's see. Can we go from the back gusset? We'll go from the back gusset first. Okay, and I prefer to put my gussets on the spine side. I've learned, I don't know why, I've just kind of learned that for myself. That's a preference. They tend to show up, the gussets on the front, but then that adds, that actually adds that whatever width, that gusset width to your spine. And to, Oh, 
Okay, now. Now, so this is what it looks like for now. And keep in mind, I did the two inches. And it's going to crinkle. Once I start sewing, once I start sewing this down, the two inch hem, or on the sides, it's a two and a half. This might be three inches on the bottom. This is probably two. But, okay, we'll wait for Judy to be back. But there's the, that's the front. And the, even though I just, because it's a stitching, it's going to be holding needles and um, maybe little spools of, flat spools of trim. Um, um, it's going to, let's see, uh, this one here, where is it? Um... Oh, yes. Memory Lane. I was never in the UK, but Jonna had an extra one. This is when they did the UK ATC swap. And, and there's even, and, yeah. And this is um, that, that um, the Tim Holtz leather thing, the, that um, grunge board. How do, I forget. Did she have this on? Yeah. Yeah. And these were the... She had extras. No, I made this one. I'm pretty sure I made this one. Did I? This is the one that she made, I think. And she, gave, and she had extras. But I think this is this one here is the one I made. But I never got there. But when she thought of me, maybe who made this? Melissa. Okay, Melissa made this for me. This is two thousand guys. This is two thousand twelve, April thirteenth, two thousand twelve. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. They went to England when? I think it was 2014. No, in July 2015, she went to England and she met up with a whole bunch of people, the a whole bunch of the English English fibs. But she had the extra, and she thought of me when she um, sent me this little booklet. And I go, oh, that's just so... Okay, now, how to get the sunflower back in there. Melissa knows I like crosses. Okay. Very painstakingly. Oh, nope, nope, come on. All right, there you go. There you go. Wow. But it would happen to be right here on the... I'm looking for my little homemade... Where is it? My little booklet thing that I keep used. Um, I recycled... I recycled some of these um, french fry holders to hold ribbon. I thought it was here. <laughs> oh. oh, it's not here. Wow. My, uh, my needs to be, um, I need to take the time, put on some music, and take the time.
Um, I see. I know you're talking about. I see her on Facebook. She's um. When did she post last? She goes under. She doesn't go under Moon Joyce. Um, she goes on her by her real name. Um, she's. I don't. Some of the really old fibs. They've. That's kind of the sentimental part of me. There are times I wish I could clean up my my um my Facebook and my YouTube. But the sentimental part of me, they're fibs, you know. And um there have been some unfortunate situations throughout the years with the, with certain fibs. There's a slight division. Um I haven't now I keep in touch with her. I I I didn't talk with her on her birthday this last year. I just went right over my head. But she made a comment. She made a comment that not a lot of people talk talk to her anymore. And um I forget where she might have I don't know anyway. Um, and that's kind of where it makes me sad because you just don't know. Um, and even though I'm not really a Facebook person and the only time I upload to Facebook is when I'm in a private, I have groups that I, and now that I have a camera that has a, a working camera, I can now get back in, but I will, okay. I do more photos on IG than I do, um, but I I talk to Mitzi once in a while. Um, on IG, and that's where I contact her, and we talk privately, occasionally, like once or twice a year, but um, you'd have to look her up. She's under her Mitzi Curry. And I haven't, man, but that's part of that, that sad thing that, um, because of, um, small frisions within, um, the fibs, you, you think the fibs are forever and you want everyone to be happy and joy and and no strife and but that doesn't always happen and um you know now that oh that's right because i did not okay so this okay <laughs> i did a goof already but i can't really i'll have to round it i may do a faux i'll have to actually do a faux um here because i forgot about it yeah and that that yeah and so many people the different stuff has gone on throughout the years um it's hard to know who, who wants to talk to you who doesn't you know it's 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 a hard thing because people misunderstand something. There's so many. And with the live chats, stuff can be said and taken out of context. It's just, it's just a kind of a hard thing. But um, when did she post? Now, Mitzi, she went through some health issues. She was already, when she was still rather, rather active, she she went through some heart is um well heart issues i think that's has been taken care of now and i anyway um but yeah i accidentally i was so busy stuffing the covers that i actually stuffed <laughs> i stuffed them yeah and i had to actually
I had to actually mute somebody on IG, one of the old fibs, because I'm not even going to go into it. But she shows I she shows up on I kept her on my my Facebook. So I, I find, but yeah, it's hard. It's one of those sad things that it happens. And um, I get some of the notifications. Now here, if I could, from what I'm seeing, like right here, this right there, I actually kind of like having some of this peek through. So I'm going to have to see if I can, per I'll do a, I can purposely fringe, see if I can fringe some of this and leave some of this loose. See that? Cause it looks kind of cool coming. So the bottom, I might only do just maybe an inch and leave the rest of it loose. And maybe I could tuck some, um, some kind of lace or um, trim to kind of see that. Okay, we're I'm leaving. Yeah, we're on the way out the door. But anyway, I just I got this to the point where it's yeah to the point where I will I will uh, let's see I will probably glue one of the sides or not glue, but I will stitch because this is gonna yeah. So it's going to get interesting, but that's as far as we got on this. And yeah. I don't know. Thanks. Um, it depends on who. Bye, Zandra. Um, it depends on who yeah it depends on um who you still follow because i yeah and as far as i know mitzi curry has not changed her ig at all And sometimes you get to the point where you don't know what to talk about, but then you, know, you have there's you have to learn a balance between making the effort and just letting it go. Okay, then your best choice is to Instagram because a lot of the older fibs are on there, are on Instagram. Um, some of them are less active than others. There is one I, I haven't contacted. I need to contact her because um, I don't even want to say her name out. But she, and I actually forget her real name. Or it spells it. It's the way it's spelled is not how it sounds or something like that. So I hesitate to say her name. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you have to just kind of pick and choose. If, because a lot of people don't, they might follow you, but they don't want to talk to you. Um, so you have to learn which ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, with with discernment. You know, you know what you know, you know what you think, you know what you what's going on in your own head and you know, hopefully you know your limits. And so all of that kind of stuff. And you know, cuz you know, you know, it's a people and um, emotions.
in whatever stage of life you're at, you, you always have emotions, good and bad emotions. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, just one of those things. Okay, guys. <gasps> wow. It's like I actually got this to this point, which is good. Yeah, I'm going to have to do one of the sides first. Probably this side here, the front. I'll have to start the front side. Yeah. And I'll pin it. I'll, when I'm off of here before, I, I will pin more closely. And then start stitching. Okay, guys, or, let's see what. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Um, I know things. And that, that's why I'm trying to say things in a, a polite way. Sometimes people know the backstory. Sometimes people don't know the backstory. And I happen to, unfortunate, well, fortunately and unfortunately at the same time, you know, and you just have to let it go. And then because they're people and you have to just, you can't just keep living with anger and hatred. And, and some people do that and they think it's okay. They, they live on that and that's okay. That's their choice. And then you just, and then, you know, it's a choice. And you just have to be careful. And if you're, yeah, you just have to be careful. And it's better off not to say anything. And you learn, you know, you will learn. <laughs> you watch and you learn. And you let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's part of the reason why I deleted one person on YouTube that I followed for a long time and I'm not going to go into the reasons, but I keep her on Twitter and same way with the, the other person. I muted her on Instagram, but I keep her on Facebook. She's an old fib. She's both of these people are old fibs and you know, I keep, I, I can keep in touch with them in one way. But yet, because of just just stuff, you know, the emotional stuff that happens. Yeah. Yeah. The emotional stuff that happens in people's lives. <laughs> Dixie? Yes. That just sounds like a mother. That's kind of like, but mom. <laughs> yeah. Two ears and a mouth. And that is a... It's right up there with the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Two ears and one mouth for a good reason. And actually those are, you know, right there. That's kind of like in a nutshell, those two things. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And then what you just said, two ears and one mouth for a good reason. Yeah. So it's not totally a sad note but you know hey questions and things crop up well you know yeah and yeah you just have to yeah and some people like Joan points out some people are um here I'm more vocal I'm more talkative because you guys conned me years ago, conned me in to, and I say con, and it's a very loving con. You guys conned me in, you harassed me into um, streaming <laughs> years ago. And then that was the decision I made. And then I try to keep up with that decision because it's something that I, even if I 
I don't need to have 40 people in my stream. I don't, you know, if like today, right now, there's five people that I see up there. That's okay. It's perfectly okay. And you don't need to talk. But, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a listener when I'm outside of streaming. I'm more of a listener. And that's probably why I end up knowing things I don't necessarily really want to know <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm more of a listener than a talker. But, you know, and if you're a, if you're a mod, yes. <laughs> and if you're a mod and I'm a mod and I'm a mod in other streams, if you're a mod, then you have another whole set in and you have to you have to you have to have a you have to know what that person um one person is very lackadaisical in her streaming and she's very loose in her she's very broad-minded and i'm a i'm a mod there and i'm like there are times and it totally go not that i because i i love her she's but her way that she runs her stream is totally different from the way I run my stream, but I am her mod. So I have to take in consideration what she th thinks. And hi, Safia. Yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of on our way out the door, but you know, that's yeah. And then there are other people who are very, and then um, there are people who trust you. They're um, without naming names or people who just adamantly trust you to be. Um, and they give it, they give you the license to kill basically, you know, as a mod, you know, we're talking, Yeah. And so you learn, because that is a mod is a parliamentary, and you have to be, you have to know when to ask question, or when to flat say you're gone. I'm not even going to give you a chance. But in like in the fib group, in in the general concept of the fibs group, you have to. You just have to lend your hand. You have to stretch out your hand, even though you might not always like it. You just have to have that concept of just let it go. It's okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. We're talking about um, towards the end here where um, Dixie asked a question about a few old mods. Um, she had some housing difficulty and I just saw her on Twitter just today. So as far as I know, she's okay. And she did have, she did have a little bit of health tweaking to do. Um, things that she had to deal with, with her health and I, and it was only the house issue because the people that she rented from, they sold the house underneath and they never, as far as I understand it, they didn't give them any time to do anything. So she kind of, yeah. But as far as art is concerned and streaming, I don't know when she's going to get back to it. Oh yeah, that's the, and then, but that's another person that I periodically on Twitter, I say, Hey, I'm slapping your head. I'm slapping you here. You know? Yeah. She's another person that I try to remember to at least every three months, which this last year has kind of went phew, right over top of my head. I haven't talked with her for a while. And even if it's just, hey, 
I'm thinking about you or just like on, like I call her out on Twitter, like, you know, in big caps, say something (laughs) or, you know, yeah. But that's the last I know. And I'm assuming if she's still talking on Twitter and she still is, because Vicky is opinionated. <laughs> she's just, you have to laugh with that. She's opinionated. And because I follow her on Twitter, I get everything. <laughs> That's part of the process. That's part of like, oh my word. Did I really need to see that? But because I follow her on other people. That's one of the reasons why, like on Facebook, I follow I follow my church on Twitter. <laughs> and they have, it's my understanding when you follow someone, they have access to what y- your, your thing. So I follow my church on Twitter, but I do not follow them on Facebook because there have been a few times, some of the fibs <laughs> have somehow or other uploaded questionable photos <laughs> and you just don't want your church crowd <laughs> they're uns- for church crowds uh, you know I just so yeah i don't follow them on facebook <laughs> just, just yeah <laughs> so yeah but yeah, so anyway, yeah. And that's just part of, you know, being fibs. And even though you might not always agree with what people say, you got to love them, you know, it's okay. You know, I'm like, yeah, like I, I, I comment, like, I, it's like on Twitter, I like one eye open and one eye shut, you know, that's kind of like the thing you have to do there. Because... Yeah. Anyway, I guess we kind of, we need to go. (laughs) I need to eat something. Let's see what, let's see. Well, we're, you know, it's not that I'm not, I'm not calling her out because we're all, we all have our opinions It's just some people, (laughs) you know, I have an opinion, but I look at it from a different perspective than some people. So I choose to keep my mouth shut. (laughs) And uh, anyway, (laughs) it just, (laughs) and like, I think with Vicky, I mean, I'm one of those that I think I could, and I have, there are times like, I'm like, Vicky, shut up. <laughs> because, or, you know, you're, you're, or something, you know, <laughs> she might not like me doing that, you know, as far as YouTube is concerned, because I am one of her mods. And <laughs> it was like, eh, let's nix that conversation, you know, like, you know, yeah, probably not a good thing to be saying there, you know, but, you know, And I tell Shauna, there are times when she gets on a certain thing and I just tell her to shut up. And then I, I had to do it. I had to do it to her a little bit, a little bit ago because it gets to a point where she, she had, she, her self-talk sometimes is wrong. It gets, Yeah. And I just, you know, I says, she said her self-talk was getting really in the wrong direction. And I just told her to shut up right out in the chat. I just says, it's time to shut up. Yeah. And I, she, I think she understood because then she just stopped her, her, she understood it without going into detail, but you know, and that's, that's that, but other people don't, anyway, you just have to going back to what Dixie, you know, you just have to just that give and take some. And like what Joan mentioned is a lot of people, they don't, 
they're very quiet. And like I said, typically I'm quiet. And if I, like, if I know you, like my mother, my mother and I could finish each other's sentences. My husband, we're in our 43rd year and he learned and I, he actually, he learned, he knows he can finish my sentences. And so, you know, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, just, okay. So do you want to stay here a little bit longer? Yeah. In, in December, it'll be 40. This is our 40. We are accomplishing our 43rd year, right? 79. Yeah. I graduated high school and married in the same year. So, and I was older because I, I had actually not skipped, but my husband, right? so he went into college at 16, 17 years of age and his brain, he was able to skip one or two grades. I forget now. I think it was just one grade. He was able to skip one grade. Yeah. Yeah, I got married. Oh, he he doesn't really tease it because it's you know age wise, and he's older than I am. He's he's much older than I am. Yay, John and Paul! Yay, fifty anniversary! Awesome! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. That is really cool. But I didn't do college. And that's the, that's one of the things like with me and my husband, his brain is like off, you know, um, he's not necessarily genius, but he's covering right there genius status. Good, Safia. That's good. I'm glad. That's 26 is is, you know, totally awesome. And my self talk with that is but you know, he periodically tells me he says, "Well, I didn't marry you for your brain or you know, your conversation." You know, kind of weird, you know, because I, I didn't, I didn't need college and that's me. If I learn something, I study it. I take a topic and if I need to learn something, I do my best and schooling wasn't my thing. I barely whizzed by. I mean, the day before I graduated, I was taking a test and I kept getting it wrong. And the principal called because it was a, because this, this was a private Christian school. So they, they had a, and he actually called, he actually called the people who um, do the, booklets, the forms and stuff, the cu curriculum that we were using and said, is it okay? Or, and he, they, he called someone who said, you know, they set the, the testing standards or something. Is it okay? Can she graduate if I give her an oral? Because I know the, I knew the information. But the written test wasn't working for me. And so he called and he, they said it should be, and they made a note and they, they looked through and they said, yes, go ahead. And I passed the oral test, but it was the day before I graduated. I was testing up until like in the evening. <laughs> so yes, yeah, some things in school were okay. 
but yeah, I, school was not my strong point. So I could not see. Oh, cool, Dixie. So yeah, I, I couldn't see for or even a year of college that, I mean, that's like, uh, yeah, my mom wanted me to go to Bible school and she was willing to pay. And I'm like, but see, as a school, as a teenage girl, and you hear things around church and around well, church, because it was a, it was a, it was a Christian, predominantly Christian call, call. And she says, um, this, the closest one was predominantly anyway. And I'm like, no, the first thing that crossed my mind, because teenage girls, they talk and they chatter and they giggle and they're guy crazy. And <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh Lord, <laughs> I am not going because the closest, the closest Bible college they called it back in the day, and they might still do. But back in the day, they called them. They get, and a lot of women, a lot of girls, got teased about going to get their MRS degree, which is the Mrs. Uh, the Mrs. certificate. They went to find a husband, and that was what went through my brain because I says, um, I and I'm like, no Bible college. <laughs> Because I'm not getting stuck with however many women giggling. <laughs> I already had, I already had, because my husband was my prayer. I already had, I already understood that, you know, this is, I already understood what was going to be happening <laughs> for me. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, back in this. And the dyslexia. When I get extremely tired, um, a little bit of dyslexia kicks in. When I extreme tiredness, but I just yeah. And I sometimes see certain numbers backwards. I think it's the nine sevens and threes back backwards. And I so <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. And I know one person, she gets extremely tired and she literally talks backwards and she's, she's mildly dyslexic. <laughs> she, and she, and she literally talks backwards. And I'm like, and that's an experience to listen to someone talking backwards. It, yeah. And I've only ever, I've only ever heard her do it. Yeah. The, but it's certain numbers. It's the seven, three, and nine. I think I will get them it, when you when you have a seven, three, oh, oh, nine, seven, three, and it's repeated. Then I will see a three, seven instead of a seven, three. I will see a three, seven, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, there are times when, but anyway, weird things you start talking about and how the, about old fibs, but I mean, to me, that was just like a horror story. I mean, cause I had sit and I had listened to all these girls. I'm sitting there. You got to understand I'm, I'm emotionally, mentally, I'm much older than these teenage girls and they're sitting there and they go, Oh, he's just so cute. And they giggle and they, and they talk and they tear him apart. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, his eyes. Oh, his, oh, his hair. And it, it, it just, and I'm like sitting there going, Oh, can we get past this? I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And they, they actually called me mom. I'm, basically the same age as them, but they, on the guys, when I'm thinking, why doesn't anyone ever ask me out? And I learned that 
all the guys thought of me as their mom. <laughs> like going, okay, that is like, wow. <laughs> but apparently I helped them, these guys, the guys. But the, th the things you learn, and I'm like, yeah. But in the long run, I was perfectly okay with it because they are, you know, I already understood certain things. <laughs> and, <laughs> but still, when you get back and think about it, I'm like, but I'm actually, the, the, they, they actually trusted me enough. I'm basically the same age as them. And yet, I'm their mom. And they, they couldn't tell their real mom, but they could tell me, which is okay, I guess, you know. I learned some doozy things. Yeah. The odd things you remember. And then this is also where it's kind of kind of goes in with the fibs when you learn things about people and their little quirks and stuff. And certain people you can tease, others you can't. And you learn very quickly with the people who cannot handle, they can dish it out, but they can't take it. That's what my mom said. Hey, oh, I, I remember hating that. If you can't dish it out, then don't. You know, if you can't take it, don't dish it out. You know, especially like with siblings. If if you do something to your brother, you know he's going to retaliate. You know, I think there were certain things that my mom and dad, nope, can't do it. Nope. But there are other things that the sibling, the sibling <laughs> hitting and they would allow <laughs> and you never knew if they were going to grab you <laughs> or let you go. <laughs> you never knew. And that's what the way they taught is that, um, oh yeah, sure. You can cuss. Cause of course, you know, our household is no cussing. Of course, mom and dad had, dad would let go of some cuss words once in a while, but when he got mad, but anyway, but you never knew. They would say, you never know if we're going to allow you to cuss. You say a, a, what is constitute a cuss word in our house. Um, or my brother, this is where my brother played on that because he would use, he would use cuss words in sentences. Certain cuss words you can use in sentences or in a in a way of speaking <laughs> and you're okay and, <laughs> and mom just rolled her eyes like because <laughs> but she that, that learning he grew he grew out of that oh man some of the, oh it just it's a funny the the from what Dixie was <laughs> what we were talking about in the 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 things you think about we probably need it's it's one p.m. here I need to eat my lunch I need to go and eat my lunch but at least Safi has had a little bit of time but yeah it just it, it just boils down and like you like with family you and that's something too is it's a it's actually a responsibility i think too is like in amongst the fibs and anybody that you deal with um it's a responsibility you and this is like i was mentioning to dixie earlier predominantly dixie is that i still follow the a lot of the fibs but I don't necessarily interact with them because they have chosen to step away from the fibs, if you will, or they have not, they, you know, you're, you're welcome. And then, but it's a, it's also, you, you let it, you have to let it go. You have to understand your own limits and what you're willing to, if you're willing to put up with frustration and that type of stuff, but it's also responsibility to learn about people and to know, and you can't, you can't do that with everybody. You have to, cause you can't just, I mean, how many people are there in the fibs these days, you know? So you have to, it's a responsibility. If you're going to 
be around someone, you have to know them and then know when to, when to, when to say something, when not to say something. So, yeah. And some people disagree. Some people disagree with that. They can just, but then I don't know, you're just tearing, you're tearing your, not only are you tearing other people down, but you're tearing yourself down. So, yeah. Anyway, weird conversation at the end, but you watched me touch fabric, cut fabric, you know, and I've got the beginning of a, yeah, <laughs> this is one of those that's going to have to be very, because I'm doing it. I haven't done this in a while. I, I usually do this um, off camera, this part off camera. But I'll probably do the sewing off camera. Anyway, we got to go. Yeah, like, we got to go. All right, so for those of you, I didn't say greetings to the people who might video later on in life. But anyway, I do forget, still forget sometimes. But anyway, I'll see you next time. And I'm messing myself up here. Okay, that's what's messing me up. I'll move that piece of lace. Yeah. I love you. And thanks for stopping by. And oh, yes. And to the people who... <laughs> a belated greetings. <laughs> oh, never mind. It's just at this point, it's like just... Ugh. And bye. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. <laughs>